So let us begin from the beginning. Who are Ya'juj and Ma'juj? And do we, what does the Quran and Sunnah say about them? The issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is something that doesn't just occur in the Hadith. It is explicit in the Quran. So Allah Azza wa Jal mentions Ya'juj and Ma'juj in the Quran. Therefore, it is pretty clear that this is not something that you can say, oh, it's only found in one hadith. No, it is found in many a hadith. But even more importantly, it is found in the Quran itself. Where in the Quran? In two specific verses, only two. Only twice in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ya'juj and Ma'juj. The first of them is Surah Al-Kahf. And at the very end of Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Dhul Qarnayn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ We gave him power in this world. And we allowed him a path everywhere. And he went to the easternmost, he went to the westernmost. There are stories mentioned in the Quran about Dhul Qarnayn. He was a just king. He thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He found people of all different types and persuasions. And then the final one that is mentioned, the final group of people. When he came to essentially a valley, there's two mountain slopes coming here. He found a group of people. They did not understand Dhul Qarnayn. Dhul Qarnayn did not understand them. In other words, this was a civilization that had no middle ground. In the good old days, once upon a time, before Google Translate, how did people translate from one another? There were people, intermediaries, who had traveled to both lands. Inevitably, you would find somebody who spoke Latin and Arabic who spoke, you know, this language and that language. You would find somebody. Dhul Qarnayn went to such a faraway land that the language of those people and the language of Dhul Qarnayn had no middle ground. So Allah is mentioning this is a far-flung civilization from where Dhul Qarnayn came from. So how then did they communicate when there is no language? They communicated with signs. You know, when you're in a tourist in a different land, in a strange land, and you have no language whatsoever, you are forced to communicate with your hands. And mashallah, you can communicate so much with your hands, right? When you really have to, you can figure things out. So they are communicating with their symbols, with their gestures. And so they say that, uh, This is the first mention of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. They say this group of people, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, they are wreaking havoc in this world. So Dhul Qarnayn, you are a mighty king, you are a powerful person, we will give you something. We will give you money, whatever is the symbol for money, and you build a wall, you protect us from those people. O oh, Dhul Qarnayn, you are clearly a man of intellect and power, a mighty king. You have a civilization we do not have. You have strength we do not have. So we want you to do something to protect us. So Dhul Qarnayn has gone to the furthermost regions of the world and there is a group of people even beyond that region. This is called Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And this civilization is saying, we want protection, we'll pay you to build this the barrier between us and them. So, Dhul Qarnayn says, I don't need your money. مَا مَكَنِّي فِي رَبِّ خَيْرٍ فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةٍ I don't need your money. I have plenty. What are you going to give me? Rather, I understand these people are evil. So Dhul Qarnayn sympathize with this other nation against Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So Dhul Qarnayn said, okay, you know, these people are really bad, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, I'll help you. What do I need from you? فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةٍ أَجْعَلْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ رَدَمًا I need your strength. I need manual power. I know what to do. I have the brains for it, but I need the bronze. I need the people. So Allah Azza wa Jal then mentions that they took big bellows of furnace and iron and copper and they made a special type of barrier and they put these people, uh, they, 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 they used these bellows of the furnaces on a massive scale and they made an iron barrier that Allah Azza wa mentions, Neither could they climb over the wall, nor could they come underneath it, nor could they bore a hole between it. So it is an effective uh, barrier. قَالَ هَذَا رَحْمَةٌ مِّن رَبِّي 
Nabi. Dhul Qarnain, when he saw what he had done, he said, this is from Allah. Allah has blessed me. Allah has given me this. It's not from me. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then either Dhul Qarnain or Allah is speaking. We don't know which one. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي Most likely it is Dhul Qarnain or an angel or somebody is saying this. But this wall is temporary. When the command of Allah comes, then this wall will be of no use. It will be gone. And on that day, these groups will be like, like waves just intermixing amongst one another and the trumpet will be blown. So this is the first mention of the Ajuj and Ma'juj and it deals with the wall that was built by Dhul Qarnayn. Uh, the next mention of uh, Ya'juj and Ma'juj is Surat Al-Anbiya verses 92 to 97. Surat Al-Anbiya verses 92 to 97 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran regarding Judgment Day Hatta idha futihat Ya'juj wa Ma'juj wa hum min kulli hadabin yansilun Until finally Ya'juj and Ma'juj will be allowed out Futihat they will be allowed out and they are going to be pouring down from every single you know slope from every mountain they're going to be coming and judgment will now be asunder will now be well close so ya'juj and majuj are right before judgment day this is pretty clear in the quran in surah al-kahf over here and the inevitable hour is coming so twice in the quran allah mentions ya'juj and majuj both of them linking it directly to Judgment Day, right before Judgment Day. Now, by the way, uh, who is Dhul Qarnayn? Dhul Qarnayn is an enigmatic figure, and uh, most of our, some of our medieval commentators, and then especially uh, the most famous translator of the Quran of the previous uh, century, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, uh, whose impact in the translation was well known. All of us who grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, we know Abdullah Yusuf Ali's translation as being the one that had the most impact, even though, long story, but uh, it wasn't very accurate. Number one, number two, can you believe this is a completely tangent? Abdullah Yusuf Ali couldn't speak Arabic properly. There's another point, he plagiarized it, but that's a whole different story, not related to our uh, topic here. Nonetheless, yani his translation went to viral and in his translation and his commentary he mentions that Dhul Qarnayn is who does he mention Alexander all of you know this okay he mentioned Dhul Qarnayn is Alexander the Great and it kind of spread amongst the masses and this is what happens subhanallah how thoughts spread even if they're incorrect and so many people thought Dhul Qarnayn is Alexander but this is really almost 100% wrong for many reasons. Most obviously is that we know a lot about Alexander the Great. We know a lot about him. And he was not a believer in Allah, he was a pagan. He worshiped the idols. And Allah praises Dhul Qarnayn as being a worshiper. And Allah praises Dhul Qarnayn as being a righteous person. And Allah never praises paganism. And Allah never praises someone in this manner. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions Dhul Qarnayn says, Qala hadha rahmatun min rabbi. So Alexander, really almost impossible. Uh, some modern commentators have said that it is the, uh, the Persian King Cyrus, uh, King Cyrus who ruled from around 600 to 530 BC. So we're talking about 2,600 years ago, the Persian King Cyrus. And Cyrus, they say he's a candidate because he ruled over perhaps the largest empire the world has ever seen, or maybe the second or third largest. You know, there have been this massive empires. Alexander the Great probably did rule over the most largest empire, but temporarily. The Muslims, by the way, ruled over the largest for the longest period of time. But that's a different thing. Alexander, for a period of time, had more, but it fizzled out with his death. The benefit or the beauty of Islam is that wherever the Muslims went, Islam remained. And Islam and the Muslim civilization was the largest, but it wasn't unified uh, as solid, if you like, as it was under Alexander. So they say Cyrus. But firstly, there are a number of things that don't match up. And secondly, once again, Cyrus was a clear-cut pagan. There is a third theory that I personally am very sympathetic to. But these are just theories in the end of the day. If you don't like it or you like it, it doesn't matter. It's just my opinion or the opinion of some modern scholars. If Dhul Qarnayn were a historic figure, what do I mean by historic? I mean somebody whom we know. Because it is always possible that Dhul Qarnayn is pre-history 
pre-recorded history because recorded history begins around 4,000 years ago. Before that, we don't really have records. Before that, it's just unknown. It's a big black box. Perhaps the Qarnayn is of that time frame. Allah knows. As for recorded history, it goes back around 4,000, roughly 4,000 years or a bit more than that. And we know pretty much all of the massive empires and the great kings of that time frame. If Dhul Qarnayn was one of the kings of this era, then we should know about him in terms of recorded history. Humanity would have known of these types of great kings who have conquered large swaths of the earth. So another candidate that I am personally very sympathetic to is the Persian Emperor Darius, the Persian Emperor Darius, who ruled 550 to 486 uh, BC. And Darius ruled over most of the known world at that time, most of what we now called Asia Minor, the Caucasus, the Balkans, Central Asia, even Egypt, North Africa. He had a massive empire and he himself traveled to the furthest east and the furthest west. And he led expeditions in, in his entire kingdom. And he fought against the Egyptians, he fought against the Chinese, he fought against or the people of that region, call them what you will, but he fought against all of these people. And what is interesting about Darius, unlike Cyrus and definitely unlike Alexander, Darius was a monotheist. In contrast to the people before him and after him, we know from the books of history that Darius was an ardent monotheist. He was a strict believer in one God. He was beloved to his people. He had the reputation of being uh, a just king. And we have records of Darius. We have inscriptions to this day of Darius in which he is saying, I am the king, you know, uh, Darius and whatnot, uh, whom God has given power, whom God has bestowed power to. In other words, هذا رحمة من ربي, literally. God has blessed me with this power. It is very rare to find an ancient king who basically, I mean, Fir'aun said, أنا ربكم الأعلى. Right? It is very rare to find an ancient king who is saying, look, I am a king, but the one above is the one who made me the king. He is the one who gave this to me. So, and, and by the way, there's also a, a very enigmatic inscription of Darius in which he is depicted as having two horns as well. So that kind of yani, adds a little bit of, of, of spice you know, uh, to the uh, whole mix there that Darius seems to be a likely candidate and he was an ardent believer. Now, some can say, for those of you who know your history, but Darius was a Zoroastrian. And we say, well, there was no Islam per se at this point in time. We're talking 2,000 years ago. And Z uh, 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 Darius believed in the one supreme God that they called Ahura Mazda. And that was their name for them, but it was one God that they believed in. So Allah knows best. We are not 100% sure in any case. And it is also possible that Fidul Qarnayn could be somebody in recorded history whom we don't know. But that seems a bit difficult to swallow for someone like me. But so those of you who wish to, they can do that. But uh, you, you have two main options in my opinion. Either it's one of these historic figures or it's pre-recorded history. But then the issue comes again to, to make the, the issue more enigmatic. Generally speaking, Quranic history is recorded history. Yani only Nuh and some are pre pre history. Otherwise, Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, the rest of them, they're basically in the time frame that most civilization is known. So Allah Ta'ala knows best. In any case, Dhul Qarnayn is called Dhul Qarnayn according to our tradition, either because he had two streaks of white hair or because he wore a helmet with two horns and Darius is depicted as two horns, or because he went to the east and the west, so the Qarn here is east and west, so the owner of the east and the uh, west. So this is the notion of Dhul Qarnayn. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَن ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ قُلْ سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا إِنَّا مَكَّنَّا لَهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا فأتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مغرب الشمس وجدها تغرب في عين حمئة وجدها تغرب في عين حمئة ووجد عندها قوما قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما أن تعذب وإما أن تتخذ فيهم حسنا 
قال أما من ظلم فسوف نعذبه ثم يرد إلى ربه فيعذبه عذابا نكرا وأما من آمن وعمل صالحا فله جزاء الحسنى وسنقول له من أمرنا يسرا ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سترا كذلك وقد أحطنا بما لديه خبرا ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ بين السدين وجد من دونهما قوما لا يكادون يفقهون قولا قالوا يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض هل نجعل لك خرجا على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا قال ما مكنني في ربي خير فأعينوني بقوة أجعل بينكم وبينهم ردما آتوني زبر الحديد حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين قال انفخوا حتى إذا جعله نارا قال آتوني أفرغ عليه قطرا فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقبا قال هذا رحمة من ربي فإذا جاء وعد ربي جعله دكاء وكان وعد ربي حقا وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا ذلك جزاؤهم جهنم بما كفروا واتخذوا آياتي ورسلي هزوا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا